Welcome to Curtis Ghost Corner, coming to you from a secret underground base in occupied America. Welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. The trip I took not too long ago down to Lynchburg, Virginia, I live in upstate New York, to see Washington Lee University, but mostly to see the Lee Chapel. I guess they don't call it that anymore. I'm not even going to get into reason why. They call it University Chapel, but Lee's still buried there. There's still a granite uh, picture of him laying down, I should say, granite statue. And you'll see that later in the video. I consider Robert E. Lee one of the main contributors to the history of the United States, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Things were different back then. That's all I'm going to say before anybody has any criticism. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Now, I'm going to show you some video here, uh, the chapel, which is right outside the college, but I'll show you the college grounds first. Sorry for my camera works a little iffy. And this is the grounds outside. That's Washington Lee College, which they didn't change the name. They kept Lee, so I was thankful for that. And right behind me there is where the chapel is, which you'll see later. Some more Washington Lee. What a gorgeous place. What a gorgeous place. And just a little side note, I had forgotten that Stonewall Jackson's house is also in Lynchburg. This is right down the road from VMI. Those of you that have seen the movie Gods and Generals have seen Jackson, Colonel Jackson at the time, teaching at VMI. And VMI is still there, and they're going over some serious uh, reconstruction, so I didn't get a chance to see it. But after I left Lynchburg, I realized that Stonewall Jackson's house is there too, and I feel bad that I missed it. So let's continue on. More of Washington Lee, the buildings around it. It was originally Washington College. They changed it to Lee, of course, after the war. He was president of that college right after the war, and he died there as president. We'll get into that later and show you his office. Well, it's beautiful, isn't it? What a beautiful place. They don't make buildings like this anymore, unfortunately. Craftsmanship style. And there is the chapel. Right behind me is the university. And that's the chapel where Lee's marble uh, statue is inside. Now, you see in the background, in that little room, is a marble, all one piece marble of Lee basically. He's sleeping, is the, and underneath the building is the mausoleum. Now, I was lucky enough to be the only person in the chapel. And I sat in the back, and it's just, it was just unbelievable. It's probably the closest I'll ever get to time travel. I mean, all the original pews. All, it's all original. All of it is original. It's amazing. It's absolutely astounding. And they even show the pew where the general and his wife and his family sat when he, when he attended Sunday services. It's just amazing. And those of you who don't know, Robert E. Lee's wife is a relation of George Washington. I mean, look at that woodwork. Look at the craftsmanship. All original pews. Now, that it, the picture on the wall, the, you know, the gentleman told me that was there, of George Washington, was on loan from, I think, either the Smithsonian or Mount Vernon. I think it was Mount Vernon, being there was a tie to Lee through marriage to George Washington. I mean, look at this place. Look at the ceilings. Look at the balcony up above. 
all the carved wood. I mean, they don't make buildings like this anymore. They really don't. It reminds me of the old Roman Catholic churches in some ways, even though it's not nearly as ornate. It's, it's class. It's style. It's just, it's just a, a throwback to a period where people gave a good damn when they built something. Let's go on. There's a oil painting of Robert E. Lee towards the end of his life. And there's the organ. Really cool. And there it is there. That is all one piece of marble. I believe Robert E. Lee's wife had a commission. I'm doing this from memory, so I could be wrong. There used to be Confederate flag, battle flag banners in the background because uh, the college students raised hell. They took them out. It's not the end of the world, but that's the way it is. That's all one piece of marble. And if you see it up close, it's amazingly well done. Unbelievable artistry and craftsmanship. Now, he's not buried right there. It looks like a coffin. That's, he's not there. He's below the building in the mausoleum, which we'll see later. Look at that. It's just, it's really something if you get up close. Now, see up close? Let me stop the video. And, and look at the, you can see the buttons on his, on his coat and his sword underneath there, top of the handle of the sword, his fingernails, his beard, his hair. I mean, that is just unbelievably artistry. It's incredibly well done. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that something? Even the heels on his shoes. And I got some more video of the inside of the chapel. I sat there in the back. I know I said this earlier. I sat there in the back, and I, I could have swore I, I was in a time warp. And in a lot of ways, I wish I had been in a time warp. Maybe not to 1860, but I'd like to have been around, maybe born in 1880, maybe lived through, yeah, we'll say uh, 1870 through 1930. That would have been an amazing, amazing time to be alive. A lot of history going on. Reconstruction. The boom of the railroads. The expansion of the United States. All the things that came up with the railroads. Electricity. Indoor plumbing. Sanitary facilities. Uh, cars. And those of you that, oh, uh, their climate. Well, there was nothing worse for the climate then the horse poop that was everywhere in every major city it made it unlivable to smell. In cars, in less than 10 years, horses were gone. It was an amazing time. Telephone. Of course, they had the telegraph for many years. Everybody thinks these guys were like, uh, you know, cavemen. You could send a message from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles in a telegraph. No, granted, it wasn't a voice. But they, these guys had communications. They, they could send... It got to the point where you could send telegrams to Europe. These guys weren't as far back uh, technology-wise as you think. And you got to remember, we went how quickly things change. We went from the early 1900s with the Wright Brothers' first flight of Kitty Hawk. And then less than 60 years later, men were walking on the moon. That's a lot of change in a very short time. But what gets me is the craftsmanship. It's just everything. It's just this thing will be up long after you and I are gone. And how many people can say that about new construction today? How many buildings have you seen torn down in your city that are less than 50 years old? Tons of them. There it is again. Washington on the left, Lee on the right. And it's, a, it's an amazing place. Absolutely amazing place. I was so fortunate to be there alone. And there's some in the museum below. Uh, you know, some stuff in the museum. Those are guns originally owned by George Washington uh, that were given to Robert E. Lee's wife, who was a relation of George Washington. And there's a painting of George Washington, of course, when he was a colonel. And some of the stuff, I believe that was Washington's firearm. There's an oil painting of Lee. And... You know, a little bit about Lee. And that vest, I guess, was his last best vest for his uniform. That one he actually wore that belonged to him. And I thought that was just freaking cool.
Absolutely awesome. And some other things uh, that gives you the history. In 1873, Lee's daughter, uh, Agnes, and his wife were buried here when Edward Valentine completed his memorial statue of the uh, recumbent Lee in 1875. Plans were already underway for the addition of the Lee family mausoleum to the chapel, which we'll see. We'll see the burial site later. In 1883, the Lee's remains were transferred to the new crypt. The lower level of the chapel became a museum in 1928. The following year, the Virginia Division of the United Daughters of the Confederacy marked Lee's first grave site with marble plaque now visible beneath the artery planetarium. That's the marble statue you saw. Pretty cool. Very cool, as a matter of fact. What a, it's a cool place. You should visit it. It's a part of our history, a big part of our history. And there's a battle flag of the Confederacy that is not the Confederate flag. The Confederate flag was similar to the U.S. flag. And there's a desk and a photograph of Lee on his horse, of course, Traveler. Now, how cool is this? This is Lee's collapsible cup instead of traveling flatware. This is what he used when he was in the field, which is the vast majority of the time in the war. He spent very little time in Arlington. In fact, he couldn't go back to Arlington. Those of you that don't realize, Arlington National Cemetery was Lee's wife's mansion home. And, of course, when he married her, it became his. And when he became a general for the Confederacy, second or third year into the war... They were running out of room to put the key, the soldiers that died for the Union. So they confiscated Lee's property and made it into a cemetery so he could never, ever live there again. In fact, Lee saw it once from a railroad. He was uh, traveling somewhere in a, in a railroad, and he could see out the window up on the hill. He could see the pillars of Arlington, but he could never set foot on the place again. And there's his mess kit. How cool is that? Another oil painting of Washington. It's a lot of neat stuff there. And there's his slippers, believe it or not. How cool is that? Very cool. Very cool. And Lee's pocket watch. You should see this thing. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's amazing the things they have in there. It really is. And there's his shaving kit. You see the brush on top. You see the razor on the bottom with the sharpening stone and up close. It's, it's just incredible. And there's a marble, I'll call it a cameo, picture of Robert E. Lee. Now, this is something interesting. This is Lee's office when he was president of Washington College before it was Washington Lee. The gentleman there told me that every piece of furniture, everything in this room, is exactly in the exact same spot it was in the day that Lee died. Now, he said the only things that have been replaced were the tablecloth and the papers on the table because over time they just disintegrated just in time from oxygen and just, just normal atmosphere deteriorating them. And every time they go to fix the floor or paint the floor or do whatever, and they moved the furniture, they put it in exactly the same spot. So that chair there on the right was the last chair Robert E. Lee sat in his office, and they haven't moved a thing. The pictures are right where they were. Everything is the same. Everything on the walls. It, I got to tell you, it was eerie as hell, but I thought it was very, very cool. Look at that. Everything is the same. Beautiful ceilings, beautiful windows. It's a, it's a very cool place. They built houses for real back then. And they built office buildings for real back then, unlike today. And there is the actual grave, the mausoleum. And right above him is Mrs. Lee. Now, I say that right above him on purpose because everybody thinks that, oh, all these women were so oppressed and all that. Mrs. Lee was really the boss. In fact, that famous picture of Lee and his son 
and another Confederate officer. This is after the war when he was in Richmond, one of the few houses not to be burned. And Matthew Brady, I believe it was, the famous photographer, wanted to take a picture, and Lee didn't want to do it. And Mrs. Lee turned to him basically and said, go upstairs and change <laughs> into your good uniform, his last good uniform. So he did it. So women had a lot of say back then. Don't let anybody kid you. It's uh, very interesting. And she's in there, and he's in there, and there's a lot of Lee family members that are in there as well. Now, I wanted to mention this. It said, educating to build and rebuild the nation. They ended up calling it Washington Lee College after he was president and passed away. Arcs back to the, back to the nation's two births in the colonial period and that soul-searching after the Civil War. The Civil War is necessary for a lot of reasons that I won't get into now that I think that the progressives miss. That if you're automatically a slave owner, you're a scumbag and shouldn't be listened to. Whatever you said and did doesn't count. And your name should be erased forever. I think it's nonsense. One thing Robert E. Lee did, maybe a little side story. You, all the officers and the Confederate soldiers had to take an oath to the United States after the war to become citizens again. Robert E. Lee took that oath and signed the oath papers, pledging his allegiance to the United States and asking for a pardon. That's what you got. You got a pardon and you were a citizen again. And the story goes, I think it was Stan, I'm not sure, the Secretary of War at the time under Lincoln. Of course, Lincoln was gone and Andrew Johnson was the president. But that's another story for another time. We're supposed to have the pardon signed and the legal requirements done. And he stuck it in a book. And a friend of Stanton's found it or something. And it's always thought, well, this can't be the original. This just it must be a copy. And there it sat. And Lee never got his citizenship, never got to vote again. Up until Gerald Ford was president of the United States. If you look it up, they found this pardon stuck in a book, if you can believe it. And when it was discovered, Gerald Ford, of course, with the powers of the presidency, pardoned Robert E. Lee. So he was finally pardoned and made a citizen again. But one thing I want to mention before we move on, Robert E. Lee, by signing that oath, not only encouraged hundreds of thousands of other Southerners to declare their allegiance to the United States, he went around and, and talked about it constantly. Whenever he was asked, yes, do it. We're Americans again. We're all Americans again. And that's very, very interesting and very noble for uh, somebody that lost the war to say that. He was an honorable man, a very honorable man. In my understanding, when he was at West Point, he got zero demerits. I don't think anybody's ever gotten zero demerits before their whole time there. Let's see the rest. I do want to mention right outside of the museum, there's a little plaque here. Now, those of you that don't know who Traveler is, is Traveler's grave. Traveler was Lee's horse. We had throughout the war and after. And when he died, my understanding was they they put his skeleton on display and all that. This renovation landscaping honors Anne Wilson. Appreciation for her service to Washington Lee as the university's first lady from 18, excuse me, 1983 to 1995. Like General Lee, Ann Wilson is a lover of animals who believes that their company and care enhance the human condition. And you're going to see, uh, that's the plaque, the traveler. I put a penny on there, that's me like a good luck thing and you're going to see the actual grave of traveler which is right outside the door this is very cool and as it was paid for and there it is there there is the grave of traveler horse of robert e lee placed by the virginia of the uh daughters of the, of the confederacy in 1971 that plaque was put up so it's a very very cool place and there's the outside of the chapel as i was leaving I really didn't want to leave. And there's Washington Lee College right behind it. I still call it Lee Chapel. I always will. I don't care if they change the name to University Chapel. 
he that college was near bankruptcy had a handful of students and they asked Robert E. Lee to be its president and he got a lot of job offers an insurance company offered him what was it twenty thousand dollars or something like that which was a ton of money back then to an insurance insurance company and he wouldn't because he was an honorable man and he thought that was beneath the the dignity of anybody just to endorse an insurance company. So when they asked him to be president of Washington College, he agreed and brought that college back and made it to the colleges today. And I think it's absolutely hypocritical that these kids that go to this college and get a first-rate education in a very cool location, I might add, all because Robert E. Lee stopped it from closing. And he died as president of Washington College, later Washington Lee. So this would not be here. And these kids would not go to school here. It wasn't for Robert E. Lee, but don't let me preach too much about this subject because I can go on forever. And there's the picture of Traveler. It's, it's really funny. Traveler's very famous in the South. And there's the outside of the chapel as I was leaving. And so there it is. There's my little tour of, we'll say, I'm still going to call it Lee Chapel, and it's in the, some video of Washington Lee College. It's a very, very cool place. I didn't get a chance to go to VMI, which is right down the road, like I said, because there was a ton of construction going on there for them. And I had forgotten that Stonewall Jackson's house was there as well. I felt like a dope when I was about 50 miles from there. I realized what, what I had done, but it was too late. But if you get a chance to go to Lynchburg, it's a very cool place. The people are very cool. It was my, I haven't been in the South in a long time when I went there. And it's just old school manners, politeness. It's, it's, it's just different. And that's in Virginia, which is in, some people don't even consider a southern state anymore. A lot of old buildings, a lot of history, a lot of historical places. And so there's my tour of Lee Chapel Museum in Washington Lee College. I hope you liked it. Uh, I'm not a camera person. I'm not a pro, so I'm a little jiggly on the cameras. So sorry about that, but it's a very cool place. And I got to sit there in the chapel with just the fans running, you know, through the vents. And without a soul there. And I could have swore, I could have swore it was the 1800s. It's, it is so real. It's, it's, it's very, very interesting and stays with you the rest of your life. Until the next time, goodbye and good luck.